Welcome back to Moving Cardboard for more play of Foundations of Stone. Now, I had a mishap. I was filming part two of this and I lost the footage. It was some technical difficulties basically. So uh, I'm gonna, it's too hard to go back in a card game like this, it would have been a lot of effort to reconstitute where I was at the end of the first video. And then just all the time I put into filming, I can't believe I lost the footage. I'm kind of uh, upset about that. So due to lack of time and trying to keep some kind of a schedule, I'm just going to recap what happened. I'm on turn nine now. I'm going to recap and just play with a single shot like this instead of the style of the prior video. That was fun to do, but it was time consuming. One thing I've been doing really in this game is I am playing solo progression style. And this is like a first playthrough for me. I'm experiencing the whole game and product line. And since it is all new to me, I'm kind of, I'm basically play a scenario a lot, tweak the deck, tweak the deck until I feel good about it and I've experienced it fully and then I film a video of it. It's not until I do that that I go on to another scenario. So I'm really eager to play Shadow of Flame. And so I'm just going to do this single shot, finish this off, knock it out. I will say, I mean, I've played this scenario I can't remember, I don't think I mentioned it, but I've played it now 28 times, I think. So, lots of times. So, um, it's, it's a great scenario, I really love it, and I want to show the cool parts to you. So, I'm at turn 9. The What I was able to do in the occupancy, you can see I've played Gildor, Bomber, Warden of Healing. I got out Asphaloth. Sword that was broken, Steward of Gondor. Those have come out. Um, Bomber is kind of overpowered maybe in this quest because every location is an underground location, so he cancels the threat of any location. Um, <clears throat> both heroes have watchful eyes on them right now. And this is the discard pile. Um, I still have no progress on stage one, but it's turn nine and I have 27 threat right now so I need to go to I need to get my resources when there Aragorn is getting four three um, himself for one resourceful and then Steward of Gondor exhaust Steward of Gondor and card draw draw a test of will Put my is gonna be my card draw for the turn so what was I planning on doing? Let's see here. <clears throat> uh, in my hand, I now have Arwen. I have three Test of Wills. I got all of those now. A Bofur, another another Unexpected Courage, a Sneak Attack, three Gandalfs, two, sorry, two Arwens, and uh, Elrond's Council. So with 27 threat, I really need to drive it down pretty hardcore. <clears throat> And I need to go ahead and start making some progress. So I'm going to play Arwen. That's not for threat reduction, but just to get her out because she's great. She's going to help boost that. And I'm probably going to go ahead and sneak attack Gandalf. And I'm going to use his uh, threat reduction. So, but let me commit people to the quest. I'm going to use Elrond's Council also. Because I really need to get it back. Oh, it's on the top. I really need to get it back down. Because 27 is way too high for this deck, this quest, and so on. But let me go ahead. I still don't have Light of Valinor, which is really annoying. But I've got Gildor. And I will quest with all of these people. Oh, well, I probably want to first, before I quest, let's use Imladris Stargazer to... Two, three, four. Look at the top five cards and arrange them. Okay, there's Light of Valinor. Good. Finally. And a bunch of other crap that I don't need or want because it's all unique stuff. Okay, so that means actually 
I can exhaust. I'll still play Arwen. I just won't. Yeah, I'll still play Arwen. And I'll use Gleowen to draw this Light of Eleanor. I'll play it next turn because obviously I don't have any resources. I need more copies of Resourceful. Okay, so let's keep going with the quest phase. So Arwen, Aragorn, Gildor. That's going to be uh, three, six. That's 10 quest points. And I'll make it 11 and reduce my threat to 24. Uh, 24, not 23, and let's see what I get off the top of the encounter deck. Okay, well this is nothing because there's nothing in the staging area right now. I had a bunch of those locations and I used Asphaloth and everything. I was able to get some Ancient Mathems out to draw more cards. That's why I have so many cards in my deck. I've played it twice. Uh, I think one of them was on video. I don't remember now. But I got two of those out and I played all my Dayron's runes. All three of them came out. But anyway, so that's nothing. So I have 10, which is going to clear this. So now we're going to go to stage two. The water's edge. Small rivers cut their way across your path. Some are not much more than a trickle and recent looking too. Another rumble shakes the walls. This time it seems to be above you. 12. Forced, after a player commits characters to the quest, he must discard the top two cards of his deck. This is a double-edged sword, but using Imladris, you can actually use it to your advantage, because I already know, like, I've got three unique cards that I already have in play, and so this actually will just, and I already have a Song of Kings, I don't need another one, so this will just actually help me just burn through this to get to like other copies of Resourceful uh, and whatever else I might want. So that's discarded. <clears throat> um, well, there's no point in sneak attacking Gandalf right now. Right, so I will just, I'll exhaust Warden of Healing in like the travel phase or whatever to heal that and then I'll just go on into my refresh phase. Raise my threat back to 25, and I'm in round 10. So, in the resource phase, he gets one, and he gets four. Sort of down door. And I draw Bomber. I don't really even care about using Glaywine right now because I don't need to draw any of those cards. What do I need to play? Okay, I need to play Light of Valinor for one. Can't play these cards. These cards I can't play. I can play Bofur, but I don't have the resources. I don't have the resources for these. So really, uh, it's just gonna go back to questing again. This time I can use Glorfindel. He does not exhaust, so I put the I put this on Light of Valinor to show that he's questing, but he's not exhausted. Um, I didn't take that off. So I've got uh, in this plus one will to everyone because of the sword that was broken. So I have four. I have three six plus four is ten plus four is fourteen, and I have to discard Song of Kings and Glaywine. I'm going to quest for 14s. <clears throat> and out comes cave in. When revealed, remove all progress tokens from the quest in active location. If it removes nothing, it gains surge. So it's going to gain surge. Deep, dark, and despair. When revealed, deal a damage to each exhausted character. Okay. That's fine. I it's annoying, but I am not going to waste my test of will for that because everyone, well, he, he's not exhausted. Everyone can survive that. And I quested for, what did I say again? 
um, 3, 6, 10, 14. So I clear this stage. So this is about to get really interesting. The, and we're getting into the point of this quest that makes me love it. And it might be getting ready to be extremely difficult. So, um, and you'll see why in a second. So this clears because I quested for 14. So we're going to go to step stage three is just like a placeholder. washed away so i've been wandering around and there's all this water so but suddenly with a groan the ground crumbles under your feet the entire section of the tunnel gives way to a deep darkness and the rush of water there is a feeling of weightlessness followed by the icy wet clutches of an underground river okay this is zero so basically i'm just going to do this wind revealed effect and then move on so without reading the whole thing basically I have to take this discard pile. I have to make a new deck, a new encounter deck. So all of the encounter and enemy cards, I'm going to keep those. I'm going to pull them out. And I'm going to take the Foundations of Stone encounter deck. And I'm going to shuffle those in. The locations are going to stay. And this encounter deck is going to go away. All encounter cards. So that, that means these. I've been playing it where those go away too. I didn't at first, but then I realized it does say um, discard all item, armor, weapon, light, and it, encounter deck cards from play. Those are encounter deck cards. So the cave torch also goes away. Um, it's really cool. The sword that was broken is not a weapon. It's just an artifact. It's not an item or an armor or a light, which is a cool little loophole, so I don't lose that. <clears throat> and uh is that true yeah just see it just says artifact and so those will all go away and then i'm going to shuffle these in with this and then i have a new encounter deck then i draw a random stage four quest okay so i've done all that and now i've got these four and i have to pick a random one it's really cool because in multiplayer, it's cool because each player gets a different one, so they split up and they have their own staging area, so I don't get to experience that. But it's still really cool because, I don't know, it, it creates this variability and uncertainty when playing it solo as well. Some of these are terrible. If I get the one that makes me discard my hand, that's going to suck. In fact, I planned poorly. I should have played the Gandalf, one of them, to get my threat down because it's a 25. And if I discard my hand, then I'm not going to be able to reduce my threat at all all right so i'm just going to go one two three four and re-roll a five or a six on this so two so below the mines the river has deposited you at the endless caves when revealed dis create your own staging area discard all resources from your hands from your heroes okay that one's not bad that one can be bad but it's not that's one of the least bad ones in my opinion Whew. so there's one that you discard all resources there's another discard all cards there's another one that draws four cards off the staging area and then there's one that's really innocuous it's like draw one card off the staging area and they all have different um requirements so this one requires 17 Okay, so I don't even put anything in the staging area. I just do that. Um, so that's that. And it, after that's happened, I'm going to, in like the travel phase or whatever, I think what I will do now is, now I'll tap in Landra Stargazer to look at the top five. Five. Okay, well, let's see here. There's a resourceful, I'm gonna to want to, this is gonna be silly. I know, but I have to discard all resources. So I won't be able to play. Hmm, I won't be able to play resourceful next turn. 
If I still had resources, I could sneak attack Gandalf now, lower my threat to be able to draw resourceful next turn and play it, but that's not going to happen, but I can at least draw it. Okay. I will exhaust Glaewine to draw this card, Elrond's Council, and then I'll go to my refresh phase. My threat is now 26. And it is now turn 11. Oh, and I wanted to use Warden of Healing also to kill those up. And before the refresh phase, my travel, when it, there's a bunch of action, there's nothing really happening in the travel phase, the combat phase, but there's all these action windows, um, but nothing happened. Okay, so we're moving on, and he gets a resource. Aragorn gets four resources, and I draw resource full for the turn. I think that I'm going to... Um, I'm going to play Gandalf because I want to just quest through this really quickly, so I will use Gandalf... So the planning phase, I will do nothing. Let's go to the quest phase. Okay. I'm going to spend one to sneak attack Gandalf. And I'm going to commit him to the quest. Commit. Commit and ready. Commit, but you don't exhaust. I commit a bunch of people. So I've got... Uh, 3, 6, 10, 14, 19. I'm going to use his ability to lower my threat by 5 to back down to 21. And then I'll also play uh, Elrond's Council. So I'm back down to 18. Okay. So that's going to be a plus 1. So I had um, 20 is what I'm going to have. 3, 6, plus 4 is 10. 14, 19, 20. Just, he gets plus one, and I'll give the plus one defense to Aragorn. So questing for 20, so there's a good chance I will just breeze through this. I get cave in, remove all progress tokens. I get it again, so this is just going to have surge. And there are some nasty things in here. Doomed one surge. So I go back up to 19. And the wind revealed isn't going to happen because there are no nameless enemies in play. So deep down here, there are these Lovecraftian nameless horrors. Okay, Surge. Wind revealed, each player must exhaust a character and discard the top card of their deck. Okay. If the printed cost is equal to or higher than the remaining blah, 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 discard the character. Okay, well, I already know what's on top. It's that. So I can just exhaust Bomber. And then discard Light of Valinor. He is not dead. I quested for 20. That is enough to clear the Endless Caves. That's kind of how my deck works here. It's kind of, I guess it's kind of standard a little bit. Like really slow build up. And then I try to just run through these. This, however, there's the game kind of puts the brakes on you a little bit in round five. So after going through the Endless Caves, Gandalf will come back to my hand, out of the depth. So I've fallen down in these caves. I need to climb back up. The shaft shoots upwards, the glimmering lines of mithril illuminating your way out of the depths of the mountain. The makeshift ladder is narrow, but you cannot linger in the realm of those things of darkness who gnaw at the roots of the world. I need 11. When revealed, add one card to the staging area, basically. Each player cannot commit more allies to the quest than the number of heroes he is also committing to the quest. So I can basically commit a total of four characters. So let's go ahead and reveal a card. I get that, so that's not anything. Okay, I'm getting a little bit lucky here. I haven't drawn any nameless things, but my threat's low enough that they won't engage me. Um, that's that. Do I want to draw a card? 
Um, it doesn't really actually matter. It's well, let me in like the combat phase or whatever. Examine the top five cards. Another resourceful. I don't really. Doesn't matter anymore. I'll put resourceful in the top and draw it with clay wine. Then I'll go to the refresh phase. Everybody gets up. Four resources. I'm up to 20 threat now on turn 12. This is turning out actually pretty well. Um, okay, so let's see here. Let's get some resourceful going on here. Do, 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 do. I'm not really sure if it matters at this point. I'll do one on each guy. All right, so. I could draw another Warden of Healing, I guess. Eh. Uh, let me see what I can, if I can, I might be able to just win. Because there's nothing in the staging area. I've gotten lucky, I just drew a bunch of treacheries. It's not stacking my staging area up. Because I need 11. I could, if I, you know, play Gandalf, then I would have 3, 6, I'd have 19 again. Actually, yeah, I think I'll just win. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'll spend 5 to play Gandalf, and I will commit him to the quest. I'll use his ability to reduce my threat by 5 to 15, and I'll commit all those things to the quest, as mentioned previously. So that's 2... No, I miscounted because I can't use armor this time. It's uh, 4, 8, 11, plus 5 is 16. I have 16 committed to the quest, which actually should still be enough. Let's see, unless I get some crazy surge effects. A goblin swordsman. Uh, so yeah, there we go, I win. Um, that was a little bit anticlimactic. Um, but this, I mean, this scenario has given me a lot of surprises in the past. I mean, just nail-biting battles. This one actually went kind of smooth overall. I mean, getting the, 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 the four, the stage four you get can make a big difference. The resources doesn't matter once you have your resource um, generation engine going. Uh, this one is just create a staging area, reveal two cards from the staging area. So you start with two. And this one is reveal four cards, but you only need five, so you can be battling viciously. This one I think is the worst. Discard your hand and then reveal two cards. It's the worst, like, I was holding all those Gandalfs. I was holding three of them, and you lose all three, and you're, you can't bring your threat back down, and then you start hitting these disgusting monsters. Um, so I missed 12 rounds. Uh, so the score was 135, it looks like. I didn't get any victory points. Uh, let me show some of the other, like, nasty cards in the deck. Okay, so just in the interest of showing more of the... what you can encounter. So it has this card, which is absolutely horrible. Lost and Alone. This might be one of the worst treacheries. This is, like, Sleeping Sentry level of horribleness. So when you get this one... When revealed, and this is really bad if you had to if you just had to discard your hand and you don't have test of will anymore. That's the other thing. I was holding test of will for something like this. Each player chooses and shuffles a hero into your deck, and that's terrible. So like, who do you discard? You discard Aragorn. He's stacked. Or Glorfindel. Probably, I, in this case, Glorfindel, because all those attachments are going to go away. They're gone. You have to rebuild them. And it's really essential that I put Steward of Gondor, or um, Sword That Was Broken, in this deck because of that restriction on how many people can quest. So you need all the 
plus one all the will you can get, you know, because there's some very high threat enemies. So that card is just brutal. Um, it can cost you the game. There are more than one copy of this in the deck. I have played where I still won in spite of it, or I get the guy back later. Like, uh, I think I did, I don't remember which one. I think it was Aragorn I put in the deck. And I got him back, like, almost immediately because, you know, like, see, I've got enough card draw that there's not a whole lot of cards left. And with him, Ladra, Stargazer, you can get him back. When you have that only that many cards left in the deck, then there's a good chance you'll get him back pretty quickly. But that's a disgusting card. It's very rough. And it's very thematic. I mean, you just got washed out. So, okay, Nameless Thing has an X value, and it takes cards from the, your deck, and they get attached, and that's the X value based on the printed cost. So when it engages you, you take the top two cards. So, like, the top two cards in my deck were two Rivendell Minstrels. Had this engaged me, it wouldn't have. With 27, I kept my threat low. But had it, like if I had discarded my hand, lost my Gandalfs, and couldn't reduce my threat anymore, then you know, then it's a six, it's swinging for six with six hit points and three armor, so they can get pretty nasty. And then there are other cards that um, make you add more to it. There's Moria bats. This one you have to have ranged to attack or defend it. It's weak, but it gets plus one for every enemy engaged with you. <clears throat> Those aren't, eh, they're just kind of like, as long as you don't have a lot of stuff engaged with you. I don't have any ranged in the deck uh, because they're just kind of an annoyance. You just don't let a bunch of stuff engage you. Um, Several of these cards, I think there might be four of these, so just Doomed One Surge, and then see, attach a card to each nameless enemy in play, if able. So. And then there's the Elder Nameless thing. This one has, see, it has four threat, three threats. So there's a lot of threat that these guys can generate, and it gets the top three cards, you know. So it would have gotten... You know, so presume these top three, I've got three, three, two, so that means it's eight. So it would be swinging for eight with eight hit points and four defense. Um, it's also got some artifacts. It's got two of them. It's got Durin's Helm and it's got Durin's Axe, which give you a little boost, but even more of a boost if you're a dwarf, if the hero's a dwarf. And it's got four location cards that are like semi-beneficial. There's Drowned Treasure. If it's the active location, then you have to discard a character. Like they're drowning, they're going down there to get it and they drown, I guess. But when it leaves play as an explored location, you get to draw two cards or claim an objective. So you can dive down to the bottom of the pool and you find Durin's Helm. These, I never really made in the active location, ever. I would just use Asphaloth to clear these things and, and draw cards. So, And there's another one, another beneficial one, more nameless things. The Mithril Load is the other one. And there's Durin's Axe, plus three attack. The uh, Mithril Load has doomed one, but when, when Mithril Load is the active location, you can tap a character to put quest on the uh, progress tokens on the quest, just straight, like bypassing it. So that's kind of cool. And then... That's it. So the treacheries are just the uh, doomed, that dude with the torch and that thing. So these guys can get really nasty. They can stack up a lot of threat when and just make it really hard for you to to make any quest progress. So um, basically Gandalf, I hold him when I play this quest with this deck. I hold him and hope that I don't have to discard my hand because then I just use him as direct attack to, to burn these guys up. Because when they first exist x is three so they have uh three hit points and the other ones have four hit points before they get cards added to them so i just start dropping gandalfs for direct damage effect to burn them before they they come down i mean that's the way to handle them but this is a really enjoyable quest like i said like i've played it and i've had just battles where i thought i was winning and then i started getting stomped and vice versa like there's a lot of back and forth and i really love this washed away and then you're in another world and it feels i mean you didn't really see it in this playthrough unfortunately it went pretty quickly once i got 
over that hump and made the new deck, but it really feels different. It feels dark. You don't have the cave torch, and I guess that's part of why only so many people can quest because it's dark and hard to see what you're doing. And, you know, these nameless things, I mean, they're, eh, I mean, the only thing about them is, is it doesn't feel Lord of the Ringsy to me. It kind of does, but like the deep, dark evil of Moria is the Balrog, not this stuff, you know, like there already was like the awakening of nameless things, which was the Balrog, right? That's the deep, dark thing, not tentacle monsters but i mean you know it's okay it's fine but it's still i mean it's still um besides that very minor minor issue which isn't really an issue it's just amazingly fun and the drowned treasuries and everything deep down in there i mean it just i love how the quest feels different it feels very different as you progress through it um, I've just played it so much that it's kind of rote for me at this point, but I had a lot of extremely entertaining games with this, so I highly recommend this quest, and I highly recommend you revisit it and play it again. Play it, I mean, like I said, I played it 28 times, so it held my interest that long. But I wanted to just, instead of going to the effort of making a really edited video this time to as part two, since I missed the other the time, I, I just really want to move on to the next quest. So, but I, I really enjoyed this one. I wonder what the nightmare version is like. I mean, because I've heard the nightmare versions generally make them better. So this quest even better would just be man. So that's it. I'll be playing um, Shadow and Flame next. So do an opening of Shadow of Flame and play that one next. I'm not really sure. I think I might try something crazy like a solo Glorfindel deck. I wonder how that would work um, with five threat. Like, man, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't. I mean, I haven't looked at Shadow and Flame, Flame yet. But there's also a new hero. I've already done the opening, so there's an interesting hero uh, to try out. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.